Today in this Creative Mind video, we will show you how to make an exciting little game set in the world of Minecraft. In this game, you can fight evil creatures and engage in combat with other players. The first player to reach a dragon box, wearing a diamond armor, and a sword is the winner of this game. This is Creative Minds. For this craft, we will use the following materials and tools as a pair of scissors. Transparent film or book cover. Bottle corks. Tape. Sickly and instant glue. Cardboard sheets. A pencil or pen. A ruler. And the templates used to form the board and the pieces of our game. We've left a link in the description box with all the things you need for this amazing craft. You will also need for dice. We've chosen dice of different colors, but this is optional. The first thing you will do is to cut three sheets of cardboard, 24 by 36 centimeters. And make sure that the cardboard you are using is a firm and resistant one. Now take two of these sheets and stick them on their shorter sides. The sheet on the right has to be able to fold over the one on the left. To do this, stick the sheets with the tape in the following way. Place one sheet on top of the other in the position that should be placed once folded. And tape the edges together. Make sure the sheets are well aligned before you tape them together. You can make the edges stronger by adding more tape around them. To reinforce the other sheets, use the third sheet by its water side and make it fold this way. Now it is time to tape the sheets together. This is how it should look like, and if you want to make the board stronger, put more tape around the joints. A long strip of tape will be enough to hold everything in place because too much here will make the board not fold well. For the fourth sheet, we will have to cut a piece of 36 centimeters wide, but this time into the height measurement the gap left on the tape. Now fold this piece on top of the one on your left and tape it together. After checking that it folds well, reinforce the joint by adding more tape. This is how all the pieces should look like once they are all joined together. Check that all the joints are well taped. Once this is done, the base of the board is ready to start working on it. The next step is to paste the images of the playing surface on the cardboards. For this, you will have to print the images that we have left for you in the description box. Once you have them, you will have to make the following pattern. Now let's glue them together. Make sure the cadets are well centered. What you have to do is to glue them in the following way before you start. Make sure they are aligned in the center. And now you can glue them using the glue stick. And now glue the ones on the outside. This is how it should look like 
once the glue is dried, get the scissors cut the excess cardboard that is sticking around the borders. Now the board is ready in order to make the board much more protected and resistant, rather transparent from around it. The next thing to do is to cut out the cardboard in pieces of 12 by 14 centimeters. Now it is time to cut the infantry pictures. Once you've cut them out, you glue them to the cardboard pieces. To make them stronger, these pieces here are also going to be wrapped in transparent film. For the tokens, you need to cut out 77 pieces of cardboard of 2.5 cm by 2.5 cm. Now cut out the tokens designs you are also going to find in these template sheets. The images that will go on the dice once they are already cut out glued into the cardboard. To finish this part, you have to classify them. Now it is time to make the dice. In order to do this step, you have to sort of the images that will go on all the dice faces. You can use instant glue to stick them on the dice faces. Do the same with the dice used for directions. Now let's assemble the players and the enemy's pieces. For this, you just have to cut the pieces out and then fold them following the dotted lines. Now make cuts on the red lines, and in order to make the mannequin, just apply glue on the tabs. Glue everything except the bottom part. make the mannequin much more resistant, and sort of bottle cock inside of it. And now apply a bit of glue at the bottom, and this is how you should make the mannequin. Do the same with the rest of the players, and enemies' mannequins. With the gas and the spider, these mannequins are going to be smaller. Just insert half of a cart in each one of them. Now it is time to start playing as you have made the infantry tokens by some enemies and players. Now we are going to teach you how to play this game. The player who gets a full set of armor and the diamond sword is the winner. Once you have these items, you must reach the dragon box. The first player who gets it wins the game. The board is divided into six territories. Each one is guarded by an evil Minecraft creature. In the game, there is also a trade zone along the board. We will also find the following special squares. The starting square is where the players are placed at the beginning of the game, and it is where they will return in case of death. In this square, combat is not allowed. This is the armor of Diamond Sword Square. When a player lands on the square, he gets the piece that is drawn on it, only if he doesn't have one in his inventory card. 
These tokens are essential to win the game, neither in the square. Combat is not allowed. This is the Dragon Square. The only way to enter into this square is if the player wears an armor. A diamond sword, if he does, he wins the game. The Villager Square. If a player lands on the square, he or she could exchange an object for hidden or vice versa. However, each player is only allowed to make one deal per turn, while the objects in this game have the same value, which is one gem. Except for those objects with diamonds on it, in which case they're worth the gems. In these type of deals, it is only allowed to trade one object at a time. It is not allowed to trade a diamond object if the player already owns that object. If a player gives the villager a diamond, a numbered object in one of his deals, this object will return to its original square. If the object is not numbered and is not a diamond, it will have to stay in the village. Now we have the creature square. There are six different types of creatures at the beginning of the game. Each creature is placed on its corresponding square. In case of death, the creatures return to the square. That is why these squares cannot be occupied by the players. Now we have the wagon square. When a player lands on the square, he or she is able to move around the board as well. If the wagon token is on that square, the wagon can move to any other wagon square as long as it is not occupied by another wagon token. The log of square of the player, where a creature lands on here, it will automatically die, and it will return to its home square. The player who lands on it will lose all the objects obtained so far, and they will return to their original squares. If they are numbered objects, they will go to the corresponding places, and if they are not, they will go to the village square. The only way to neutralize the lava is with a water cube. The only piece not affected by the lava square is the gas in the dragon's territory. The cube used to neutralize the lava will return to its original square. The iron sword square, here you must place all the iron sword tokens. The first player to land here can take one, as long as it is not occupied. The only way to get the object is if the token is on the square when he lands on it. The sword is only used to kill players or creatures. If the player lands on any square occupied by a creature, or gets to meet one on his journey, he could use the sword to kill it. Once the sword is used, it will return to its original square if it is numbered, or to the village if it is not. If a player with a sword enters into combat with another player, who doesn't have one, the unknown player will automatically die. He will hand over to his killer all of his tokens, and go back to the starting square, and an iron sword can be exchanged for a gem. This is the gem square. In the square you must place all the gem tokens. The player who manages to get your first can get all the gems that are in it. The gems can be used to trade with the villager. You can exchange for other objects like swords, cubes, or pieces of diamond armor. This is the water cube square. In here, place all the water cubes tokens. If a player is on a lava square, he can neutralize it with a water cube. In this case, the player will not die, but he will lose the cube which goes back to its original square. The cube can be exchanged for a gem, the village's square. Now let's start organizing the board. This is how you should do it. Before the game begins, regardless of the number of players, each of the must be placed on its corresponding square. For instance, the creatures will go in the creature square. The objects will go in their corresponding squares. The diamond objects will go in the square with the same symbol. And each player must be placed at the starting square. This game can be played by up to six people. To decide who goes first, the players will roll one dice. Whoever scores higher will go first. In the event of a tie between one or more players, they will roll the dice again until the tie is broken. These are the infantry cards. Each player must have one and they are numbered. Here, each player must place all the objects, but he or she collects during the course of the game. The squares on the left side of the infantry are reserved for the honor and the diamond sword. Only one object can be placed in each box of the infantry. In case it is full, you must get rid of some in order to gain more. All the objects that a player leaves behind can be taken by other players. These items should be left in the square where the player first left them. For this game, we are going to use for dice. Two of them are numeric dice. It will tell the player how many squares he needs to move forward, and another dice is for creatures, and the other one is just for giving directions. A 
player has the option to roll a dice or two. For example, the creature dice will tell the player which enemy will move each turn. The direction dice will tell in which direction the enemy will move. And finally, the numericos will tell how many squares the player can move. Below, we will explain the roll turns. Each player is required to make the rolls in their turn one for player movement and one for creature movement. On the player's roll, he may choose to roll one dice or two. The resulting number will be the number of squares he moves. Even though the player is free to move around the board, he cannot retrace his steps in the same roll. If the player wants to retain an object, he must first land on that object square and not just pass over it. If a player encounters another player in his move, he can overtake it. Both of them land on the same square that will enter into combat. We will explain that later on. Players may not jump a creature. If a player passes through a square occupied by an enemy immediately, he enters into combat. If a player doesn't have a sword, he will die and go back to the starting point. And also, he will have to leave all the objects in his possession and they can be taken by any other player. In the case of having a sword of the player will kill the creature, the sword will return to its original square, and the creature will return to its creature square. When a player kills a creature, the player will end his move, on its square even if his roll is higher. We will explain the creature move. Immediately after moving the player, he will roll one numeric dice, one creature dice, and one direction dice. These three dice will decide which enemy, how many squares, and in which direction he will move. If in his move a creature crosses a player, this player will enter into combat, and if he has no sword with him, he will die. But if he has a sword, he will kill the creature, sending it straight to its original square. The sword will also go back to its original place. In terms of the creatures, they are only allowed to move within the same color squares. Once the player has finished with his roll, it will be the turn of another player. Now we will explain what happens if the players have to enter into combat. This only happens if the players have landed in the same square. If both players are unarmed, they enter into combat as equals. Each one rolls one dice. The player with the higher score wins, and the one with the lower score loses, and he will have to hand over to his opponent all the items in his inventory. Also, he will have to return to the starting square. In the event of a tie, this will be rolled again. If one player gets a sword and the other does not, the unknown player will automatically die, and also he has to hand over everything in his infantry and return to the starting point. But if both players have swords, they will enter into combat as equals. We will apply the same rules used for unarmed players in combat. And this is all you need to know in order to play. This amazing game of Creative Minds is created for you. If you have any questions about the rules, or you want to learn more about the game, you can leave your question in the comments down below. We will try to answer all of your questions. We hope you have enjoyed this craft, and see you all in the next one. Now it is time for the hidden question, have you seen it? Do you know the answer? If you do, or to us by typing the letter, article 1, and also the answer that you believe is the correct one. The answer for the hidden question of the previous program was hidden in a minute 8, and one second, and the question was, how many bits are in there and what are their measurements? The correct answer was given by CJH. Thanks for your comments and for participating. Now we leave you all with these funny comments.